Welcome to The Food Files, the show where we find out what's eating what and who's eating whom. I'm Toby Travers, and on today's show, we'll take a look at some recent events around the country. Underwater antics, the rough and tumble marine world, updates on some of our native animals, and we bring you a special feature, spotlighting one of the nation's most wanted animals. First up, we have a chilling report about a shark feeding frenzy spotted off the coast earlier today. Let's cross to a vet. It might look quiet now, but earlier today, locals reported intense activity just offshore. It was a swim off when a school of fish attracted a large number of hungry sharks. Who came off the winner? Well, it's hard to tell. The fish stuck together for protection, but the sharks still got their dinner. Back to you, Toby. Thanks, Yvette. Life looks good at the top of the food chain. Time for Quick Bites. Quick Bites. This local pest's passing didn't go to waste. An army of ants made a meal out of its remains. Quick Bites. Caught on camera, one of our more elusive residents, a Rakali, our native water rat. This night vision shows us what excellent underwater hunters Rakali are. This one comes up with the goods on almost every dive. Kids and adults don't always eat the same things, and with green sea turtles, it's no different. Adult green sea turtles are usually herbivores, but the young ones are sometimes more adventurous, like this one closing in on a tasty jellyfish meal. This plant's future doesn't look very promising. A hungry caterpillar was spotted earlier, moving in for a feast. And now, an update on some of the country's most vulnerable species. Here's a vet with a report from a local sanctuary. Thanks, Toby. I'm about to check in on some very special marsupials. They're right behind this fence, and you might be wondering why. Well, if they weren't, they could end up as someone else's dinner. Here's what our infrared cameras recorded. There are woilies, bilbies, rufous hair wallabies, and burrowing betongs. And they're all endangered or vulnerable to extinction. One of the main reasons they're in danger is because land clearance has left them without any food or shelter. And predators are doing a great job of eating them. Some of these predators are introduced, like red foxes and cats, which were brought here by the first settlers. This is why sanctuaries are so important, because they preserve habitat and keep predators out. It's not just marsupials that need our protection. Birds can do with some too. Recently, the Department of Environment and Conservation and BirdLife Australia held their great cocky count. And this year's count brought some worrying news. There's been a drastic decline in the numbers of black cockatoos. Here's a vet to tell us more. I'm at Karakin Black Cockatoo Rehabilitation Centre with some very special guests. Black cockatoos aren't doing very well because they don't have enough food. They mainly eat native seeds, but they're fussy about which type. They prefer plants like Mary. But because of land clearing, there aren't many suitable trees left. Black cockatoos nest in the hollows of trees, and because they're large birds, the hollows need to be big. This means that the trees need to be old. There's another problem. Competition for hollows is fierce, and some competitors are foreign invaders. European honeybees were brought into Australia to help pollinate our crops. It turns out that they also like to build their hives in tree hollows. You can see the problems, not enough food, a shortage of suitable nesting hollows and competition from introduced species. Here at Karakin, staff and volunteers are giving these birds another chance. Now to our feature story. They're known as one of the country's most notorious outlaws, wanted in three states and one territory for crimes against ecology. So far, they've outwitted the weather, local predators, and even scientists. Today, we take a look at this highly successful outlaw, the cane toad. 
Cane toads are native to South America. 101 were introduced to Australia way back in 1935. They were brought here to eat cane beetles that were destroying sugarcane crops. Since they arrived in Australia, things haven't gone to plan. In just over 70 years, their numbers have exploded and there are now millions spread across the country. Right now, they're invading Western Australia. To find out more about the impact of cane toads, let's cross to a vet. Thanks, Toby. Luckily, cane toads haven't arrived in Perth yet, but I think they'd feel right at home here. This is an ideal environment for cane toads. There's water, shelter, and lots of food, like insects, for them to eat. But we don't want them here. There's a major problem with cane toads. They're poisonous, and it's not just the adults. Even their tadpoles are toxic. Cane toads could even kill me. Not that I want to eat one. These native animals didn't choose their dinner very wisely. You see, animals that eat cane toads usually end up dying. Even cane toad eggs are dangerous. Our native animals have no defences against these toxic toads, which is why cane toads are one of the country's most wanted species. Thanks, Yvette. They mightn't have reached Perth yet, but I've heard they're great hitchhikers. So, keep an eye out for stowaways. Well, that's it for the show. Thanks for watching. And remember, when it comes to food, if you don't eat it, someone else will.